All right, back on the bench today is the Ruger 1022. And in this video, we're just gonna do a detailed strip and put it back together. So it might be a bit of a long one. Feel free to fast forward to whatever part you might be stuck on and need some help with. Let's just get into it. So the first step with this 1022, the factory ones, not all of them, the Sporter doesn't have a barrel band, but most of them do. Whether wood stock, it's gonna have a steel barrel band. This uh, super cheap plastic sock one just has a plastic barrel band. You just loosen that up, slide it off. Over here, there is one action screw holding this stock in place. All right, here's the tricky part of taking this thing out of the stock. This little cross bolt safety actually acts, um, if you can see here, it's it's blocking the stock. So this whole trigger assembly and everything is going to pull right out of the stock. But the problem is this thing is in the way. And if you have a wood, a wood stock, you can damage the wood if you just try and hammer it through there. So what you actually have to do, and this can be a little tricky, is get the safety halfway between safe and fire. If you can do it and hold it with your hands there, hold it with your fingers. Or This one, I can get it to stay put sometimes. All right, and then we just, you saw that, we just popped the front fore end off and out it comes. But like I said, if that is either on safety or fire, it's not gonna work for you. All right, so you can see this is just regular old Tupperware stock. First thing we're gonna do is just take this trigger group out. And it's pretty straightforward. There's just two, two cross action uh, pins that will push right out with minimal effort. You just shove them right out of there. Whatever punch, out to go. And out comes our trigger group. So in order to get our bolt out, we have this one remaining pin in the receiver. Now those other two pushed out very easy. This one takes a little persuading and it's just because it fits tight in there. There's no spring pressure or anything touching it. But what that's doing, if you can see this in the back of the bolt, let's see here, right here, I'll show you when I get it out, but it's cut out and slides up against that pin. And uh, that keeps your bolt from going any further back. Um, some guys will replace that with like a, a polymer or a rubber pin so that it doesn't, um, it, it, it makes it run a little bit quieter. Uh, but that pin's got to come out because it keeps our, our bolt from falling out. All right, so let's set that on our bench block. Or if you don't have one, use a roll of electrical tape, something like that. And just use my brass punch. There we go. And out she comes. Now that that's out of the way, our bolt can go all the way to the rear of the receiver. And holding it back with your thumb, just lift up on the front of the bolt. Okay. And then you should be able to see how it's sitting in there at an angle now because I lift it up on the front. And then turn it over, out it falls. And then out comes your, your recoil spring and your charging handle, okay? This is your bolt. You can see that uh, recess I was talking about where it slides back up against that pin, how it keeps it from falling out, right? We can't remove that bolt with that pin in place. All right, our extractor is right here, this little hooked arm, it goes in to this uh, circular recess. It's got a little leg that sticks out. I'll show you here in a second. This is a plunger and here you can just maybe see the spring in the back. When you're taking this thing out, be careful because like always, this thing wants to just rock it off into orbit. So I like to take my little hook. You could probably use a screwdriver, hook it on this plunger for the extractor, pull it back and then Hold it in place with these fingers. And usually I need to get like a needle nose in here just to get a grip on the extractor. 
Shouldn't have to force it, it should just come out, but getting a grip on it can be tricky. It should just come right out of there. If it's not coming, then you probably don't have this plunger back far enough. It's not hard. It's easy enough, just takes a little patience. No, don't get in a hurry. There we go, out she came. All right, that is our extractor. Once again, it just, feet, it just fits. You can see this piece fits right into that circular hole. Okay, so don't lose that. That's important. But we still have this can of snakes to deal with here. So let's put our hand over it like this, and release it just in case. Cool, no drama. Out it comes. All right, now we can give a good deep clean on those. I'm gonna hammer this out for the sake of the video. Once again, I think you can get by with just, uh, you know, spraying. Where's my brush? Here we go. Uh, spray some CLP in there and then get after it really well with a brush. Uh, but maybe once in a while you're gonna need, if you're starting to see an issue because you'll see this is spring loaded. If you're starting to have uh, light primer strikes a little too often, you might need to take this out. You could have a worn down firing pin. It, you could have a, a weak spring inside of here, or it could just be filthy dirty and gummed up from too much, uh, too many rounds or cheap ammo. That's another problem. So might have to drive this thing out. So here we go. I'll start it with this little shorty roll pin punch. You see how it, that little nipple just kind of fits in that hole there and it keeps it from walking around. loves this at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, moving on to the longer one here. Hmm. Okay. There's a firing pin. Look how nasty it is. Okay. So firing pin and this little tiny firing pin spring. Okay, we're gonna save that guy for later. And uh, again, I'll just, before I put it back together, I'll just clean all this stuff up really nice, but that is your firing pin. And if you see this end here, over time, that can wear down, you would have to shoot an awful lot because rim fire is hitting on the edge of a brass case and it's real soft. This is hardened steel, but it can happen. It will happen over time and you might just need to replace it. Well, that's that's it. That's what you're looking for. Super easy, super cheap. There's our strip bolt. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set this aside. We'll move on to the trigger. All right, let's crack into this trigger. So we got four pins here. Um, we've got the bolt lock pin, the magazine catch pivot pin, the hammer pivot pin, and the trigger pin. We'll start here at the top uh, This with this magazine catch, or I'm sorry, the bolt catch pin. And it just pushes out, and we'll just push this pin through. There's our spring is released, and just pull the pin out. There goes our ejector. And then, so this is this is still uh, captive here until we pull out the magazine catch pin. Just drive that out. And you have to push in on the uh, magazine uh, catch, the, the plunger here. Push that guy in and pull this lever straight out of the bottom and out comes the plunger in the spring. All right. Now we can remove the bolt catch and the way we want to do this let's put the the trigger onto fire hold the hammer with your thumb and pull the trigger to release the hammer push it all the way forward and you can grab that with your fingers i got fat fingers so i just grab it with a pair of needle nose 
and pull the uh, hammer spring out. And out comes the hammer pivot pin. And the hammer and the mag catch spring plops right out. Now the trigger. When we do this, you want to make sure that this uh, uh, trigger spring in the back and plunger doesn't come rocketing out. So keep a finger on that trigger and dry, we'll drive the pin out. There's the pin. Keep keeping that finger on the trigger. Pull that out and out comes the sear and the disconnect, uh, the, the disconnector, sorry. There's our trigger spring and plunger. And trigger comes out of the top. So just I just want to go back and show you what we just did there. The parts that came popping out. So disconnector goes in like this. We'll we'll get we'll show you when it goes back together. But I just want to show you here this spring, don't lose that because that will come out of the sear. And this sits in. Like this, you can see the detent in the disconnector for the spring. So when I pulled that pin, the sear came out and then we can push this out if you really wanna take it all the way apart. All right, here's the trickiest part, removing this safety from the trigger housing. So the best way I've found to do it is put it on safe and reach in there with a small screwdriver like this. You're gonna reach under the safety you can see this piece where I'm going underneath of it, there is a spring and a plunger. I'm going to push that down and then push it off safety onto fire. And you'll see that has pushed into the housing. Okay. Now watch out. There's a spring in there and a plunger. Push that thing all the rest of the way through. You can see it's coming out here. And as you take it out, that spring's going to want to just take off. So keep your hand over it, or you may never find it again. There it is, and there's the plunger. Okay, that is as apart as this thing will go. Okay, now here's a step quite a bit further than you're going to need to go if you want to just clean your 1022. But should you want to remove your barrel, it's a very simple process. Okay, we've got these two uh, barrel retainer screws going into this sort of a V-block um, barrel retainer here, right? We just remove those two screws and out will come our barrel. Let's just do it. All right, so barrel retainer cap screws are out, All right? You can see they just screw into the receiver again this is aluminum so when you go to torque it back in follow the torque specs it's a lot of threads but still you're stripping you're screwing steel into aluminum that's never never a good time to just go ape on it okay non-marring hammer light taps Switch to the plastic side. There we go. Yahtzee. There you go. Um, this gun is as apart as it can get. Let's put this thing back together. Let's we'll start with the barrel. And we don't need to get too crazy. Just make sure it's lined up. But as we uh, tighten up this retainer, retainer block it will slurp that barrel right back in where it needs to be we're gonna get this thing uh, torqued to spec once I snug it down here all right we're set to 20 inch pounds I'll go ahead and torque this guy down You want to keep it even as you're going. So if you find that you've put quite a bit of torque on it before it broke like that, um, go to the other one. You don't want to just, there we go. 20 inch pounds. That's cool. 
All right, let's put our bolt back together. So we're just gonna go in reverse order. We'll start with the extractor spring and the plunger, get those guys together. I did clean this all out pretty well. And uh, so get your little pick there or whatever it is you're using. Of course, you don't wanna rocket this thing off into orbit. Okay. Hold it right there. On your extractor, you've got the little claw part goes out towards the front of the bolt, all right? This little nub here, that's the pivot point. So just get that in and nice and straight. You're gonna drop it in there and then you're gonna wanna take, I don't know, like let's use this punch right here. Make sure that thing's all the way in there. No, it was not, okay. Because that spring and plunger needs to go over the top There we go. So it needs spring in the plunger needs to go over the top of the back part of that extractor, right? So it hits on that shelf. So now it's in there, it's good to go. All right, you see your firing pin. You've got the the flatter side of the spring and then you've got kind of a, it sort of works down to a narrower diameter. Put the flatter side of the spring towards the front of your bolt. There's our bolt face, right? So the flat part of the spring towards the front, you just drop it in there. See if I can get my light. All right, just drop your spring in there and it just sits in that notch in there. And then in comes the firing pin and that little hooked part of the firing pin right there, that narrowed down part of the spring rides right in that kind of notch. So set it in there, push it forward, and you're gonna just, uh, let's make sure I didn't lose my spring, all right. So we're back to that roll pin. Okay, if you've got a vise, this is a good option for you, but you wanna make sure you get this pin started. So you might need to get it in there and just give it a little tap. Okay, just that little tap so we're not mushrooming the uh, ends over. And then we can put it in our vise and use it like a press. Just slowly get it going. Now I got to make sure I put my spring back in there and firing pin. All right, and we're going to hold that in place. I'll reach up under here. Hold it in place like so. You know, always doing things the most awkward way possible to get them on camera. All right, do not force it. If, if things aren't lining up, let's take a peek. Looks like it should be lined up. All right. If you don't like what you're feeling or what you're seeing, stop. All right, stop, verify, okay. So once again, let's give this another go. There we go. Now it's just pushing right in there. All right, now that we've got our uh, pin driven most of the way back into our, our uh, firing pin and we can see that we do have motion there, so it's not bound up. Um, go ahead and throw it on the bench block and just drive this the rest of the way with a a brass punch. Okay, looks pretty good. Firing pin moves like it should. Extractor's in there, bolts put together. Let's just go ahead and put it back in the receiver. It's gonna be a little bit frustrating, but it's, it's a fairly straightforward process. Okay, what we need to do is get the charging handle back into the receiver and you can see here it's got this uh, little piece that the charging handle the rear of it sticks up against um, what we're going to try and do this is the top of the bolt 
So we're gonna put it in like so, right? But just so you can see what we're doing, the charging handle is gonna be in the receiver like this. We're gonna set the bolt on it like that, all right? So we bring these right side up and you can see that the charging handle is cut to allow it to sit into the bolt like that. What we do, just put the charging handle into the ejection port like so. And then remember our bolt can't just drop straight down there. It has to drop in back here. So what we want to do, this works better. I'm trying to film this, but it works better if you can put this into a vise or something like that, but we'll get it done. With pressure here on the charging handle, take a screwdriver or something like that. Cause if you push on this, it puts it in a bind and you won't be able to push that back. Apply pressure here with your screwdriver, okay? So what I've done, I've moved this handle all the way to the back, all right? Then we'll hold it in place. You can see it's a little at an angle, and it's all right. We can finagle that little bit. Now our bolt drops right in there and very gingerly just wriggle that uh, charging handle back and forth until it drops into place like that. All right, now our bolt and our charging handle are in there. We're gonna put our, uh, our bolt retention pin back in place. I can find it, there it is, okay. No big deal, we don't have anything to worry about with this pin. Make sure you use something soft so you don't mess up the finish on your receiver. That's in. Now our bolt functions, doesn't fall out, right? Even when it's to the rear. Okay, our receiver and bolt carrier group is all back together. All right, so let's work on putting this thing back together. Once again, the tricky part is getting the safety in there. Um, just remember, red on the left, and if, if it's hard to remember, you push this button with your right to click it on to fire. Um, you can see here the way that detent works. This guy goes up inside of it, right? And it just clicks over, and that keeps it in place. Anyway, the hard part here is let's get some needle nose. see there's a hole here let me show you first there's a hole down in there right there okay the spring goes in there so get down in for spring my uh, pliers have been magnetized and then um, this plunger goes on over the top of that spring okay now what I like to do, I'll use one of these roll pin punches because it will kind of allow me to center that that punch up. If you use or the the uh, plunger, if you try and press that down with a regular punch, because it's domed, it just wants to walk off all over the place. So I use that, um, and it seems to work pretty well. And then it doesn't really matter which side you push your uh, safety in from, just as long as you get it in there. All right, so we get it in and over, and I'm going to slowly take, well, take the pressure off of that spring, and there we go. She's back together. So from there, I think I'd like to just put things back together in reverse order that they came out for the most part. So I'm going to start with the trigger spring and the little plunger here that goes into the, the small hole in the back of the trigger guard. You have to kind of hold that in place as you're getting, well, I forgot we took this part. Okay, let's start out with our disconnector, okay? Think of this sort of an L shape, all right? And uh, you can see how the sear fits in to that little hook down at the bottom of the disconnector. All right, we've got our spring piece there. So I'm gonna go ahead Put these two together 
and put the disconnector, well, let's put the disconnector, put the disconnector into the trigger first, get carried away. All right. Now we'll put the sear in and just line up that spring with the disconnector and there you go. All right, from here, there's, it can be tricky because we, we can't put the pin in to hold that uh, sear in place until the trigger is in. It's also the trigger pivot pin. So, you know, you're not gonna be able to keep much tension on it. That sear is gonna wanna take off. So just put the trigger housing on its side there and slide your trigger through the trigger opening. Okay, we'll keep that spring from falling out. Okay. And we're getting this thing lined up. Just like that. Okay. Now we've got the trigger in there. And you can see this is the hole we're going to be putting in this shortest pin into. So we'll get it going into the trigger and we might have to jostle the sear around a little bit to get it to line up so we can get the pin through. Just be patient. You will not have to force any of these. You'll, you'll, you'll notice when we do this how easily these pins come out. Um, if you're having trouble with it going in, use another punch. I use a smaller punch to get in and align these. So you can see the sear is, is a little too far forward. No big deal. Just get in there with this smaller punch, push it back. And then as we push the pin through, it'll push the punch right out of the way. So there we go. All right. Now our trigger pivot pin is in, trigger uh, return spring is there, and we've got the disconnector and the sear in place. Cool. From here, next step will be the hammer. Now the hammer, this, it's not real tricky. This, uh, this is our magazine catch spring and it has to go in with the trigger. If you look here, this kind of hairspring, it's got uh, this little dog leg in it, all right? This is the face of the hammer. See this sort of teardrop shape, okay? And this spur coming off the back of it. All right, this is the front of the hammer. This is going towards the front of our trigger. This dog leg on this spring is gonna go onto the face of that trigger. Um, so from here, I like to come in with the hammer in like this because we've got you can see we can more or less get it lined up just like that. And here we've got, of the three pins remaining, we use the largest diameter one. Okay. And we're just going to fiddle with that hammer. Uh, you gotta, this works best if you put the trigger on to fire, pull the trigger back. I pull it back with this finger. All right, while I apply pressure on the pin here, and that gives us the room we need to move the hammer into place with the with the trigger forward because you have the disconnector and the sear of the trigger itself it's kind of in the way of the hammer you pull those to the back you can get the hammer in there nice and easy so all right we should be able to push the hammer to the back have it lock pull the trigger have it come forward cool next step with the hammer all the way forward is going to be the hammer spring you can see we've got a maybe you can't can you see that? There is a hole in the back of the trigger assembly. That is for the trigger spring itself. We'll go in there and then we can flip the trigger back up into place. I'm sorry, the hammer, hammer, hammer spring and hammer. Get that guy in place. Now, when we click it back and we pull the trigger, we've got some force behind it. So with the hammer lock to the rear and the trigger on safe, we want to pull our spring, our mag release spring back up 
where we had it. All right. And from there, we will drop in the bolt catch. Now, on this little dog leg on the bolt catch, you can see there's a indentation on it. That is where this spring will reside, okay? So let's put this in, right? The dog leg going to the inside. You'll see it release, uh, you'll see it pop through the trigger housing into its little home there, all right? And then as I was talking about this mag release spring, we'll drop down and we'll, it'll find its way into that little uh, recess in there. Okay, from there, we'll just go ahead and put the mag release, or I'm sorry, the mag magazine uh, retention buffer in there. And then our magazine release lever. Uh, see how you've got one flat side and one where it comes in, that flat side will go to the right hand side. So slides in just like that um, and the mag retention buffer this what I keep calling it magazine latch plunger sorry magazine latch magazine latch plunger as you as you push that in let it out you'll this uh, mag latch will find its way in there and we've only got the two remaining pins left they're both the same so it doesn't really matter you put that in there and we have to reach up here to the bolt catch and sort of finagle that around until it lines up this hole right here. I'm pushing pressure on this pin from the bottom and we're just looking to get that lined up and pops right through. Our last pin, we're gonna get it started through the bolt catch and then we're gonna, don't forget our ejector, actually that hole right there is for that same pin and before we push it home all the way through, we still have this spring, okay, the mag latch spring. So we're gonna push that down, push that pin through, and that spring underneath the pin is what provides our, our pressure for the bolt catch, our uh, return for the bolt catch, and our trigger is all put together. Let's test it, put it on fire, um, pull the trigger, Hammer goes back, it's like the mag release works and the bolt catch works. So that is a 1022 trigger apart and back together. Not that big a deal. All right, well, with all of our components back together, we'll just put the trigger back into the receiver. We've got our two cross receiver pins that hold that in place. Remember they just drop in. All right, let's go ahead and just put this back in, back first, and then I will, our safety is uh, halfway between safe and fire. And now that we've got our action, barreled action into the stock, we'll put our action screw in place. And... This is actually torqued down to 10 inch pounds. So let's see, one second here. I've still got this thing set to 20 from the barrel screws. So we'll back this down to 10, right there. There we go. And our barrel band goes on. There's no torque spec here, it's just Nice and snug. And let's just make sure everything works here. Our, uh, so our bolt operates. We can, uh, our safety doesn't fire. I understand we don't want to uh, dry fire rim fires very often, but just for demonstration's sake, I've got it on fire and everything fires. Make sure that our magazine, that's an empty mag, Make sure our magazine goes up in there, stays put, and we can get it back out. Cool, all right. Well, there is a detailed strip and reassembly of a Ruger 1022.
Thanks for watching.